Hi there, um, Anna from Art by Anna CL here, and I have been asked to show you how I get, how I make my my pens basically. So the pen in question, or the the type of pen in question, will look like this once it's finished and assembled. Obviously, just with cane slices, so a different design. So this pen comes in a pen kit that they generally sell or market to wood turners or pen turners. So it's got a lovely twist mechanism there. So very smooth operation. It's it's just lovely. I love these pens. They look so professional, so classy when they're done. Beautiful gifts for anyone. The kits that you can find come in all sorts of different metallic finishes. There are red ones and blue ones and chrome ones and satin, gold and silvers and obviously gold ones and gun metal and really all you have to do is google um, slimline pen kits and there are so many out there. So When you buy the pen kit it will come complete with everything you need to finish the pen. So it will come with two brass tubes. They're seven millimeters wide. And that's what you put the clay on in this case. You'll get the twist mechanism, which fits into the brass tubes and gives that smooth action when you twist the two parts to. Um, extend or retract the inkwell. Now this just sits inside here, screws in there, and it's secure. It won't come back out. But this is also replaceable, which is lovely. So you don't have to throw the whole pen away or keep a useless pen around because it's pretty. Replace this little bit, and they're not too expensive to replace either, so that's a bonus. Then you will also get the metal finishes. You'll get the center band, which goes in the middle, obviously. The tip of the pen, which this will fit into. It won't fit now. It needs a bit of force. Fit into one end of one of the brass tubes. So a good idea is to be aware that one brass tube at one end will be the front of your pen and at the other end it will be the middle of the pen and obviously the other brass tube will again be the middle of the pen and then the top of the pen. So at the top of the pen we'll have this clip that sits on the top and this um, cap end which goes through the clip and then also fits into this little brass tube. Easy peasy. Um, the first thing that I didn't know, which um, has made pen making so much simpler for me, is investing in these guys. They're called bushings. Um, as a polymer clay artist, I only ever need to purchase them once unless I lose them. So pen turners or woodworkers tend to wear them out, but as I'm not really doing anything to them, you know, um, I'm not running any machinery anywhere near them. They will last me until I lose them, basically. So, um, getting these makes such a difference to the end product because um, you don't really want your finished pen. You want it to be beautifully finished um, where the bits fit together. So you don't want there to be, you know, you don't want it to be too thick around here or um, to have a dip in there or anything like that. And these bushings, if your clay on the tube fits this, it will fit this. So bushings, very good idea to invest in. Right, that's all for the 
the boring bits, I guess. Um, let's get started with this pen, eh? Right, so I've got a couple of canes here that I've I've already obviously made. If there are any here that you would be interested in either seeing how to make or whatever, just let me know in the comments or through Facebook or anything and I will see what I can do about showing you how I do that. Now, the first thing you want to do, and maybe it's a good idea to just do this before you even know what you want to put on your pen, is grab this little brass tube and some sandpaper or a nail file, any sort of abrasive paper would do. And you just want to lightly score the, oh let me not do it over my clay, you just want to lightly score the surface so that the clay has something to hold on to. It's not essential to do this. I have gotten away in the past with not doing it, but it's just an extra safety measure that the clay won't slip or move or something unforeseen that you don't want happening once it's baked. So that's all it takes. Two seconds and it's done. Right. Now what I have to keep my bushings and my tube secure and close to each other so that I can work with it is I have cannibalized one of these plastic knitting needles. It's an Aero 6mm needle and it just works beautifully. The tube sits on there almost perfectly. There's a slight, I think there's a millimeter gap maybe but on the whole it works perfectly and all I have holding it in place is some of these cheap um, hair elastics. You, know, you buy them in a pack of about a hundred for two three dollars. They're really not expensive and if they get broken you just turf it and get another one. Right so this is a tube that I've already scored earlier so it is good to go. The color that I'm using here is a lovely um, lilac or a purple color um, and although you don't often see the base color on my pens it's always a good idea to try and match the the flower in this case it's flowers but the color scheme of the flowers need to if not match then at least complement the um, color of the background um, because it can just get very awkward if um, the flowers clash with the background and you've missed a spot and you only see it when it's too late. Right, so let's get this up and wrap it along here. So this part is pretty simple. It's just a thin sheet of clay. I've run it through my pasta machine on setting nine, which is the thinnest setting that I have on my pasta machine. And then trim this off. When you're putting a layer of clay on the tube, when you're cutting it like I just did, always cut it a little bit shorter than what you think you might need because see that tiny little gap there. Once I press this down onto the tube, that gap will close itself up and I won't have any excess clay. See? Easy peasy. This elastic's come loose. Right, there we go. 
Now for the fun part. I like to, in my pens, I like to have one flower that is sort of the main flower of the motif, so the bigger flower. And then I'd like I like to surround it by a bunch of either um, complementary coloured flowers or similar coloured flowers, but of um, that are quite small. So for this particular pen, I'm going to use this turquoise rose. It's one of my favourites. So what you want to do is you want to take. Um, really or relatively thin slices. The thicker your slice is the more likely it is to distort when you place it on your pen. Another thing to be mindful of is to try and keep the slice uniform so you don't want it to start off thin and then end thick or the other way around. You want to really try and keep it as uniform as possible throughout. So if you start off a bit thick, stay at that same thickness and just work with it from there rather than try and recover and then end up with a thin bit at the end. So the way I slice my canes, and there are hundreds of different ways of doing this, but I hold my blade on both ends um, and then I look down over the top and I just press down. When um, I slice my canes I generally try and um, I try and turn the cane after every slice because obviously I'm putting pressure from the top as I'm slicing down so if I keep doing that my lovely round cane could end up you know distorted into an oval shape. So every time I slice it I'll just turn it a few millimeters to, well I usually go to the right but it doesn't really matter. So you see how thick that slice is? It's really, I don't know, maybe a millimeter thick. So, and all I'm going to do is just lay it on top there for the moment. And we'll get another one. I wouldn't suggest leaving the slices on top of each other like that for too long because they can. Um, it's raw clay, and raw clay loves sticking to raw clay. So, which is why I wrap my canes in um, plastic wrap so that when I store them, they don't. Um, make friends with their neighbors and destroy hard work. Okay. So there we go. Now I've got a couple just haphazardously thrown on there. And um now I'm going to get some leaves, I think. I have a spare slice here. I might use it later. So I have this Focus, that'd be fantastic. I have this um, leaf. It's made with um, two shades of green, I think. Maybe three. I can't recall. But again, the same process. Um, concentrate on on cutting the slice uniformly, then just. With the round cane, I said that I um, I will turn the cane when I'm slicing, but because this is obviously more of a teardrop shape or a leaf shape than round, what I do when I slice it is I start from, I don't slice straight down, I have 
the where the lowest part of the cane is that's where I'll start slicing I'll keep my blade sorry I'll keep my blade on the table at the lowest side of the cane and then um, bring this side down so that I'm putting pressure from the highest side down to the bottom that probably made no sense because even I'm thinking that made no sense Anyway, so once I have my leaf slices I just pop them on the table and I like to give them a little curve at the top like that so you can see it's not just it's not the same teardrop shape it's sort of curved a little bit this way anyway so. and now same thing just wherever I feel my pen could use a leaf or two I'll just pop them on there Now is usually when I start overlapping things. So in the beginning, you saw that all the um, all the big ro rows um, cane slices were fairly far apart, and none of them were touching the others. Um, but now, as I'm filling in my little garden, I want there to be some overlap. Not always, as you can see these are still all alone. But here this is overlapping there and again over here. So. Now I'll get another flower. Which flower am I going to use? Use this one I think. This was actually a failed experiment, but it turned out quite nicely. Not exactly what I was after, but nice anyway. So I'll get my blade again. Um, if you've been using your blade for dark colors, it's a good idea to, depending on how sticky your clay was, um, just giving it a wipe over just in case there's bits of clay left on the blade or anything like that you don't want it um, on the next one so I just use these little alcohol prep pads they're usually used for um, cleaning wounds or scrapes or scratches or preparing when you're about to have a blood test or whatever it's just a little alcohol pad or alcohol wipe And now as the garden is filling up, there's obviously a lot more overlapping. Um, and by the end of it, I will most likely have most of the large initial roses covered with um, other flowers. Right. There we go. Okay, so now that I have a fair amount of cane slices on there, and I feel like if I put too many more and before they start overlapping too much more, I'm just going to roll this out to. Um, make sure that these cane slices aren't going anywhere, they're not going to move, they can't be peeled off. So I tend to use the palm of my hand, the fleshy part, and I'll put the pen in there and I'll just gently roll it backwards and forwards between my palm and my 
work surface. It happens to be a glass cutting board. And you really don't want to put too much pressure one place or another. You want to sort of keep it an even pressure and you want to make sure that um, if there's any one part that's higher at the moment than any other part you want to make sure that you work on that now otherwise it will become a much bigger problem later so as you can see they've all been flattened in there quite nicely but here we've got um, a big size difference between what it should be and what it currently is so all I'll do is I'll just keep gently rolling it backwards and forwards there's no rush there's no need to have it done and get out the door just take your time enjoy the process okay. now at this stage there are quite a few little divots still left in my pen. I don't know if you can see that. I don't even have a piece of paper. I'm not very well prepared today. Um, where was it here? You see that dip in there? Well, that is something that you really don't want in the end product because it's tacky. Um, some people like it, but I don't. I mean, I don't like it at all. I think it's horrible. So there's some smaller ones over here as well. So basically what's happened here is the cane slices is obviously there's more clay there now than what there is where there's no cane slices. It's just the base, the purple base that's left there. But at the end of the day obviously there'll be cane slices everywhere and those gaps should be filled. Right. So now I have my big flowers, my medium flowers. I need some smaller ones. Yeah, this one I'll do, I think. I can't get the plastic off. This is just a you can see it's just a a little bit of plastic and all I do is I wrap my canes in it and then um, they tend to last a bit better they don't get stuck on anything they don't um, if they don't mind being on the table for a while they don't bother about anything really. They don't collect dust or dog hair, which my house is full of. I know I went on a bit about the cane slices being even, but it really is important. And if it's not even, you'll find that you have to work harder when um, when you're rolling out the pen later on. As you can see, here's a dog hair. Maybe you can't see that. If you do have pets, can you see that? Um, I have these lovely long nose tweezers on my desk at all times so that when I see dog hair or whatever I can immediately handle it instead of just leaving it for later. Now, there really is no right way of designing a pen like this. Whatever makes your little heart happy, that's what you do. I tend to cluster flowers that look similar together because I think that naturally um, in a flower garden 
you're more likely to find a bunch of flowers together that are similar than having you know one flower here and another one that looks like it over there etc etc okay so there are some yellow and green ones on there um, I'm going to put some more of these yellow ones on but I want to get some more leaves I think this time I'll use it's the same leaf that's just been reduced a little bit more so it's a tiny bit smaller actually, I might actually reduce it a bit further I make all my own canes so um, I know how long they've been sitting um, but if you buy your canes as many people do from um, Etsy or wherever you find them that's fine but when you then reduce I, I made this cane maybe yesterday or the day before so it's still fairly fresh um, but when you buy your canes from someone else you won't know how long they've been sitting, how fresh they are, blah blah blah. So it's a good idea to warm them with body heat. So either holding it in your hand for a minute or two, or just ladies putting it in, in your top for a while, or in your pocket, just somewhere for a couple of minutes so that it can warm up the clay a bit um, which will make it easier to reduce without distorting it because if you've spent your hard-earned money on buying a beautiful cane you really don't want it getting destroyed just because you were neglecting your um, heating it up okay I might have too many leaves now I'll just put them aside. Alright, we'll get some more of these yellow guys. What I like to do is I like to have some flowers sitting on top of leaves and then have the leaves covering parts of other flowers so that it's not just predictable always it's it's a bit more random a bit more chaotic okay there we go okay again I feel like there are enough cane slices on here that we can probably roll it and make sure that we um, get those secured on there nicely with my plastic wrap. This is when you need to start being careful because it's very easy to um, want to get it done because, oh well look at it, it's so pretty and then Then you rush through it and you don't pay attention and suddenly it's all right. I mean with flower canes it's not such a big um, it's not such a big dilemma if they get a little bit distorted. It's usually fine. But with um, things like faces or kaleidoscopes once you get a bit of distortion can ruin the whole effect I had some green clay left on my desk and it's now ruined one of my flowers if you did have a stray bit of clay like I just did there oh, I should have probably showed you um, all I did over here you might still be able to see the mark in the flower there 
um, there was a little bit of little fleck of green clay that must have come off one of the leaves or something that had gotten rolled into the the flower there and all I do is I take the sharp corner of my blade and I just gently scrape away at it um, as you can see this blade isn't super sharp it won't cut my finger but it certainly cuts clay nicely I'm not allowed sharp blades I tend to cut myself badly <laughs> Okay, it's looking pretty good. Um, just these little movements, that's all that's needed. As you can see, I'm not rolling it all the way backwards and forwards across the whole table. Just short little, probably about... this distance on my fingers, that's all I use when I'm using the tips of my fingers, so it's just little bits backwards and forwards. And what I'm looking for constantly is that um, those lumps and dibbits are all smoothed out and it just looks like a painting rather than individual slices of clay being stuck together. Right, I think we need a different colored flower on here. There's a bit too much yellow, I think. Maybe it's white and purple. Okay, let's see. It's one of my favorites. It's a little pansy. Is that right? You can use one particular type of flower, so you can cover it all in roses or daisies or pansies, or that's about the only flowers I know offhand. Um, or, of course, you can do what I do and I tend to just go with whatever I like. I, I don't stick to any sort of, oh well, yeah, these flowers will never grow alongside those. I don't care. I don't know. But of course, if you care and you know that pansies, for example, won't flower at the same time as roses, and you don't think it's a good idea to have them on the same pen, then don't. I mean, it's your pen. It's you who has to like it. the one rule I have about my art. Um, I make it... Oh, sorry. I make it so that I like it. If I don't like it, or if I think that it needs something, or that whatever, then I will work on it until I like it. I do sell my art um, through a couple of different places, but nothing that I sell is anything that I'm selling just because it might sell or it's popular with some other vendors or whatever. Everything that I've made and everything that I'm selling is something that I will wear or I will use myself. It's not just because, oh well, the in thing right now is, you know, whatever and I want to make money off of it so I'm going to start selling that something. I don't think art works like that. I mean, some people it might, but it doesn't work like that for me. 
I need some more pink, I think. Maybe purple. I'm sorry if I'm boring you to death with all my nonsense. Basically what I'm looking for is spaces that I think are a bit empty. I, um, I've been asked about why I have such a big collection of canes and well, this is the answer if I only had three different flowers then um, suddenly my choices are very limited as it is I've got a whole little container here of different ones I feel like I need some other colors and that's just the ones that usually live on my table <laughs> I have a substantial collection Oops. something just fell When you're reaching the end of putting your cane slices on there and getting it all finished nicely, now is when the bushings are important because you want to make sure that your design doesn't go further than the end of the bushing because, well, that's the end of the tube, isn't it? And you also want to make sure that there's not a huge difference between the height of the clay and the height of the bushing. So it's okay, like in this case, it's slightly bigger. Um, really just maybe a millimeter higher than the um, bushing, but that can sometimes work to your benefit as well. Um, it leaves something for when you want to sand your, your pen later or buff it or whatever the case may be. Now, the last thing I usually do is, so as you know I started off with the turquoise rose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same rose but it's just been reduced a lot smaller because at the moment they're all hidden behind all the other flowers so there's a little spot up here around the top and let's see where else could we fit one I'm sure I'll find somewhere else um, so what I'll do is I'll take some slices of this one For those top bits that I pointed out before, what I usually do, and now this is stuck to my finger, it's not coming off, is I'll take a, 
cane slice and I'll actually chop it in half so that I'm just putting it so that it looks like it um, see just putting that half on there and then we'll find a spot for the other half and go right there so two birds one stone two spots one slice and some more over here you don't have to do it with roses you can slice any flower in half and just fill up the top I just find that it's hard because you know flowers are generally rounded it's hard to get um, the tops covered nicely putting some of these um, I call them daisies but they're probably not I just think they're very pretty I just like to they're very very simple and I like to just sprinkle a handful of them on well, on just about everything I do actually a problem because I can't recreate it. <laughs> I'm rapidly running out of them. That's okay. Right, I think that's that. So again, when I'm starting to press the slices in, gentle rolls with the meaty pot of my hand, and then for the um, the final checkup, whatever you want to call it, I'll use the tips of my fingers. Right, that's that for the flowers. The leaves, look at that. How quick and easy that went. Right, now, this is something that I've been doing on all of my flower canes, flower pens, um, since I started doing them. And it's a bit hard to see what the cane looks like. Um, but this is a two-part cane. It's a layered cane. So it's these two parts, <laughs> which you can see are really, really, really well reduced. Um, the one, the black one, is a little dewdrop. And the white one is a little sparkle so that it looks like light has been reflected off of it and I just love it so I'll pop a few around on some of the leaves It's 
sometimes I'll even pop one or two on a flower petal somewhere if I think it warrants it. lovely thing about the water droplets are they doesn't matter if they get distorted it doesn't matter if they're not beautifully round or anything like that they work everywhere right on there. Not too worried about the fine details right now because I need to put sparkles on them. I can't remember how many I cut. This is the one cane that I won't be able to show you how I did it because it's not my tutorial to teach. It's um, it was I saw it done by the very talented Meg Newberg. She runs um, I think her site is called Polymer Clay Workshop. Um, so if you were to Google her, or even search for her Etsy shop, I think, by the same name, Polymer Clay Workshop, one word, I think you can find it there, the tutorial. I usually count the dew drops so that I can um, be sure that I haven't missed any sparkles when I put them on. Right. Can you see that little dew drop with its little light reflection? This one there. One over here, another one down on this leaf. Isn't that lovely? I think they're quite spectacular. And then, <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but what is a garden without a few bugs? Let me show you the fat side. It's a little ladybug. Focus, there it goes. Ladybug. And I might even put down a bee or two. No, oh, that's upside down. There we go. Right. Two or three ladybugs, I think. So, I can put one. Spot for one. Okay, one here. Oh. There we go. Some ladybugs. These are probably among my least favorite uh, creepy crawlies. I 
mean, I don't like creepy crawlies as a rule, but bees bite. Yes, I know, technically they sting. Bumblebee. There's another little ladybug over here. There's another bee. And that's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Of course, I'm not saying this is the right way or every other way is wrong, but this is the way that I do it. And as you can see, I don't really get distortion. I mean, as I say that now, I'm sure that, you know, Murphy's going to come and kick my butt, but generally I don't get a lot of distortion in my picture canes when I do it this way. It's just gentle rolling backwards and forwards, making sure that you um, don't put too much pressure anywhere in particular. You keep gentle movements and I just like to make sure that there's no divots if you do find a divot and you can't um, sort it by just rolling your your blank um, a few more times what you can do to fill that gap is to just add another slice of cane so, another little flower or a leaf or whatever. And the very last thing I do before baking, because this needle is plastic and it won't like the oven, is I just find, as I rolled this, obviously the, um, the clay spread over the top of my bushing. All I'm doing is I'm taking my laid and I'm just trying to find the there it is trying to find the end of the bushing and now that I have it I will slowly and gently just roll it back making sure that my blade is touching the bushing the whole way And then just remove that extra bit. If you don't want to remove it because it's got some flowers or something that you want to save, you can gently push it back. I'll do that with the other side so you can see what I mean. But whatever is over the bushing is deceptive and it can once it's taken away you can sometimes be left with um, some distortion when you take it off or sand it back or whatever um, either your your picture is distorted or it's not uniform like one side will be higher up than, another, than the other side which means that your pen is a bit wonky So here's what I mean. The other way of doing it is taking your nail, please excuse my lovely manicure, gently, very gently, everything we do is gentle when it comes to cane work. Gently just push the clay back a little bit at a time. Patience, that's what you need. Now, 
Sit ooh, got there. Bit of elastic. Um now because as you can see this is all raised now. Gently push it, making sure not to push it back onto the bushing. Push it down around all the way. Roll it again. Right. And that's all there is to it. Now rinse and repeat for the other side. Bake it in the oven. I usually do mine for about um, 45 minutes. So here we go. This off. Now see if I hadn't um, made sure that the clay was no longer attached to the bushing, when you pull it off like that, it can actually stretch the clay, thin it out and distort your pictures. So that's another reason to make sure that your clay is detached from the wishings before you attempt to remove it. There it is. If you have rolled it the way I do, um, you're not likely to have fingerprints on it, but if you do, um, a good idea to smooth that away is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit just on your fingertips of um, cornstarch. So you just literally touch the surface of some cornstarch and then just rub it gently backwards and forwards over the entire surface of the um, pen blank, which is what this is called. Um, gently backwards and forwards, all along, all around, making sure that you don't press too hard because as you can see at the moment, and this is really, really important, it's the same thickness all the way around. The clay is the same thickness throughout. There's no high bits, there's no divots. Um, because, of course, when you put it all together at the end of the day, those will show up very, very clearly. There you have it. I will finish this up and add a photo at the end of the video of what it looks like all built. Thank you for watching. Bye.